What's going on guys? In today's video, we are going to review the Vermi VG3 Fitness Tracker. be very clear because there's a couple watches on Amazon uh, with the Vermi uh, watch label so we are reviewing the VG3 fitness tracker and you'll have the description and I'll make sure scrolling at the bottom here not the VT3 or any other ones so we'll make sure we have the proper link in the description uh, but what happened was Vermi reached out and they wanted to send me a fitness tracker to try out to review I'm not into fitness trackers I've never really uh, been interested in them. I, I guess I don't. I don't know. I, I understand the appeal, but I've just never used one. Uh, it just so happened that at the time, uh, as my wife was training, she kind of was generating interest in getting a fitness tracker. She had used a Fitbit years ago, but had stopped, and so she was looking into Apple Watches and some other higher-end brands of fitness trackers or fitness watches. Uh, and then Ver when Vermi had reached out, it was like perfect timing for me to just get the watch and give it to her to review because since it was something she really wanted, and then she could compare it to the higher brands uh, that she was interested in. So, Jennifer is gonna be doing most of the talking in this video, because she's the one who's been using it for about, what, about four days? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So she's been using it for about four days, uh, and uh, yeah, why don't you go ahead and start by telling us uh, what's in the box? Well, you get this box, and the watch is inside, and then you get the charging cable. It's similar to an Apple Watch, charging base, I guess you'd say. There's just a little magnetic piece here that you uh, attach to the watch and you can just plug it into any charging block or USB compatible device. And then you get uh, uh, some limited instructions in the instruction manual and that's it. So pretty, I mean, the only basically what you need. So, okay, now we know what's in the box. Um, as far as fitness, you, when working out with it, we'll start there and then we'll talk about what it provides. Because it, it, it actually, every day she was kind of showing me the watch and I was kind of more and more impressed with all the things that are on this watch. It's not like the like an old Fitbit that just kind of tracks your steps or, or I don't know, I haven't used a Whoop or anything like that so I don't know all the things that it tracks. But the first night she actually wore it to sleep because it does track your sleep. So what exactly does it track? Okay, here's a look at the watch's features. Here's the watch face. You've got the time. It shows the date, day of week, seconds, the last recorded heart rate, and the steps. When you swipe down, you've got a quick menu for a stopwatch, a timer, a flashlight, some settings so you can set the, the watch to 24 hour, um, the military time, the date and time. So the date and time is not synced with your phone. And you can turn on do not disturb. And then there's your battery level. And when you're back at the watch face, if you swipe this way, here are all of your different sports tracking options. And then if you swipe right again, it shows your heart rate throughout the day that it's been monitoring it. Your stress level. And the last time I did mine, you can see that little arrow. I'm in the green for stress. Then your uh, oxygen saturation level. This will not monitor it throughout the day, so you'd have to manually measure it. And then another 
menu, you've got your compass in here. This is the breath training. You have these diff four different options to do the breath training. And your heart health. This is this can drain your battery if you enable it. So I I suggest only doing it, you know, for a couple of days a week. Here's where you can change the different watch faces. And some of them have all the detailed information and some are just kind of fancy. You can change the color. And then your calendar. It'll show the events linked with your calendar, but mine is not linking for some reason. Then here's your rings that tracks your progress for all of your goals for the day. And as you get closer to your goal, the more it reads the level around the ring. But that fourth one with the little foot, I have no idea what that one is. And it hasn't moved for a few days, so I don't know if it's not tracking. You can swipe up in this menu to go into more detail. And it shows your progress throughout the day for each one of those. There's no data for that one. And that's it. Now that you've kind of had a, a glimpse of the features that the watch has, first, um, I guess I should ask you, how, do, how was working out with it? So um, well, we're going to have some footage uh, showing how, when you were training with it, because I remember training. But we do a lot of very functional training and barbell work and dumbbells and kettlebells and all these different things and moving around. So uh, when you first put the watch on and we're going to train with it, I was kind of uh, not worried, but I was a little... I was like, I wonder how that's going to work with her, your wrist being kind of moved around like that in those barbell movements and those kettlebell movements. Mm -hmm. um, so how was the how was training with it? Because basically it's a fitness tracker, mm -hmm. so you got to be comfortable wearing it while you train. So how was that experience? I would say it's a little bulky. I had an iWatch before, and it just seemed uh, less noticeable on my wrist. The watch band is kind of bulky, and the face is kind of big. So I noticed definitely when we use kettlebells and we would rack the kettlebells, it would hit the watch. So I would have to turn it around or just take it off so I wouldn't smack the watch face. And then uh, just doing regular movements, I got kind of used to having it on, but it, at first it just felt kind of bulky. And I liked um, being able to check my heart rate whenever I wanted to while I was working out and having the option to track my workout. The only thing is that out of the 18 uh, workouts that you can choose from for your tracking, it seemed like a handful of them didn't really seem like I would ever use it. So like I watched it has cross training or strength training and that would be more beneficial to what I do. There's a badminton uh, option. <laughs> so Zero. I feel like you could swap out badminton for some strength that's, training. Yeah. yeah. She showed me that. Like I was shocked that they didn't have uh, like strength training or weightlifting or, or something to, for that. Mm -hmm. It was what was the closest we found. We had to, I guess she had, she had to select like hit. Um, or aerobics. Or aerobics. Do you think that flipping it around affects its ability to capture your heart rate? You would think that it well, you would think that it would because here's your pulse. Mm -hmm. If the sensors are right on that, you would think that that would be better. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, so you're saying that regardless you flipped it or not, you feel that it still tracked your heart rate. Yeah, there wasn't um, anything. Oh yeah, it's tracking the heart rate right there. Yeah. All right. So now we covered uh, basically comfort when you're training, uh, go ahead and break down what you have as far as your pros and cons on the fitness tracker. So I'll start with pros. Uh, what I really like was if you swipe down on the watch menu, you have a lot of small, quick items that you can select from. The swipe up feature, you can just see if you have any messages. So you can uh, turn on notifications for a handful of apps for your messages and your phone. So you can have those quickly. And if you turn do not disturb on, then you can uh, just peek at your messages and see if there's any notifications that came through while it was on Do Not Disturb. Uh, I really like the oxygen saturation meter. 
Uh, you can set the palming gesture because, you know, if you're using your hands a lot or, you know, talking to someone, you, you don't want your watch popping on and, and on. I really like the vibration notifications. You can set for, like, the alarm. You can have, um, you can set how many times you want it to vibrate. You can set it for up to 30 times. Uh, you can take a photo from your watch. You can't set a timer on the app, so if you're taking a picture, you're going to see yourself touching your watch so if it's from the you know the waist up you'll see yourself oh so you it. have to <laughs> all right well that's it guys that's a you know vermi that's a cool feature so that's maybe something to like a three second uh, timer or something like that the sleep tracking i uh i didn't think i would get much use out of the sleep tracking but it's really interesting to see um, your sleep levels throughout the night. You know, you've, you've had that watch for a few. I didn't know, I had no idea I had all that. I thought, yeah. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, man. That's impressive. So I didn't cover every single thing. Like there's a And that's compass. not even every single thing. Yeah. That is a lot. I think these are just the things that you I, would, I would, I discovered to be very positive. The pros. Nice. Okay. Uh, I feel like I have a lot of cons, but it's, it's not really that. I just wish I didn't have as many. Uh, one thing on the app is you can set auto recognition mode, and I have no idea what that is. Yeah, as soon as you put it on the charger, it should show the battery level. And it's very sensitive, so if, like how I keep touching the watch because I'm talking about it, I've probably changed the watch color several times already. <laughs> like I said in the beginning, it's kind of bulky, it's kind of it's kind of larger. Maybe this is more of a man's watch, I don't know, it's not as Yeah, because as I'm looking at it, I, mm -hmm. I like it. I, yeah. I love the face. Mm -hmm. Like for me, that would be perfect because I hate tiny mm -hmm. faces. Yeah. And I do not like the square. That's why I've never. And I, I like the square. So while I'm sleeping, um, the way I would sleep, I would put, I would kind of cuddle up to the watch and it'd be so uncomfortable and bulky. And I would, I woke up a couple of times and I saw the menu and my cheek had turned <laughs> it on and was doing all kinds of crazy things. It, uh, this watch does not have GPS, so if you like to go on walks or runs or hiking and track your path, uh, this one will not do it. I don't think it's fair to put this 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 con in there, but uh, while I was looking into other uh, watches, the lower end and the higher end, the, a lot of them had a weather option, and I don't know, it just seems kind of... I'm sad that it doesn't have a weather option. And the last uh, con was, so this has four rings, and but the the last ring, which is the yellow ring, it just says zero out of 30 M, and it has a foot, and I have no idea what that's for. I reached out to Vermi on Instagram. They, they saw my message, and they didn't respond, so maybe they don't know what it is either. But it's this, 30 burpees. <laughs> Good job, Jennifer. So um, now let's let's talk about price. In the description, we're just going to send you the Amazon link for, to purchase the watch. Plus, there's a reason you want to purchase it from Amazon. What's the price on Amazon right now? So right now the price is seventy nine ninety nine, and at this time you can do uh, you can click the little extra coupon and save an extra fifteen dollars on the watch. So also, when we got the watch, a card came with it and said if you did a review on Amazon you'd get a $40 gift card. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 40, 15, 55. Jesus, this watch is like $25. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I mean, if you do all those things, guys, I mean, it, that is, that is a, an amazing tech watch fitness tracker for $25, right? Even if, even if you end up paying the $80, that's an amazing price. I remember back in the day when I bought Jennifer a Fitbit, and all that did was track her steps. And this is when the first ones came out. I think it was her heart rate and her steps. I think it was steps. And then the more expensive one had the heart rate one on it. And that thing was $120. And the more mm -hmm. expensive one was like $200. How much are the Apple Watches right now? Um, at least $200 to $300. Yeah, $300. 400. And then you looked up the, the more modern Fitbits that have all the stuff that the Apple Watch have. And that one's three, four hundred dollars yeah. mm -hmm. So, I mean... Look, if you want, if you're one of those people and you're you're a swagger type person and you want an Apple Watch and you've got the money for that, you want to go spend on that, then it's going to have Apple type features and an Apple type build. Although I do remember the first ones coming out weren't that great and people were not happy with that. Um, but you know, if you just want a fitness tracker, that's a seems to be a pretty decent product. That's very affordable, and that's guys, all my reviews is all about. 
is the product that you're getting like affordable for the consumer or is it like just severely overpriced? My take on this is like, I didn't even know, like I said, Jennifer's very thorough. I didn't even know she had like discovered all those things about the watch. I was just like, how's it going with the watch? Oh, it's good. Okay. You know what I mean? Um, so she, she opened my eyes to how, like how many things are in this watch. And that's a lot to gain for $80, $60. So my take on it from the outside looking into, you know, Jennifer's usage, I'll say that it's worth the money, especially if you're not trying to shell out with everything going on and like trying to shell out $340, you just don't have it, but you really, really, really want a fitness tracker and you've got at least $80, $60 to spare. I think it's a great purchase for that with everything that it comes with. Jennifer, what do you think? Is it worth the price? Yeah, I totally feel it's worth the price. I did have uh, the first iWatch and it just out of the blue stopped working out of nowhere and Apple wants to charge $200 just to yeah. get it running again. So um, this is, it's just, this works just as good. You know, you can't do some other functions as you could in iWatch, but just tracking your fitness and receiving some of the notifications. It's it's very handy and it's fun to use, you know, for that much money especially. Yeah, I mean, again, it's it's, it's affordable and in you know, if it, if it, if something happens to it if you bang it, it's not like a, a super expensive thing. Could you imagine if you were wearing an iWatch and then your kettlebell hits it? Oh yeah. I mean, so, you know, to each his own, if you, like I always say, guys, if you've got the money and you want the high-end stuff, then you go get the high-end stuff. But I'm all about finding the best deal as a consumer. Okay, so that's our review on the Vermi VG3 Fitness Tracker. Okay, so we say it's a, it's a good purchase. All right, Jennifer, thank you for uh, allowing me to give you a watch to play with <laughs> and have so of gifting you a watch <laughs> to, to review. No, you did a really good job. So... As always, guys, if you enjoy the content, please like and uh, subscribe. And also, I'd like to ask this question. Do you think it's just better as far as... Now, I'm not saying it's tech, because of course, techie-wise, techie people are going to say, you got to buy the Apple product. As far as just a fitness tracker, do you think like an affordable fitness tracker is the way to go? Or are you thinking, no, I will, I'd rather just spend the money on Apple? I'd like to know. So go ahead and put that in the comments below, all right? And again, always be sure to like and please subscribe and we'll keep this thing going. As always, keep fighting for fit, no excuses, and we will see you in the next video.